Ack, you're back for more. Well, I've got more for you. Let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, something that I actually hid from you in the last couple of videos, and that was when I run our program that we have been working on, I'll hit Alt-L now. Notice you don't see anything. Well, that is because I am capturing on my second monitor, which is this monitor right here. But when Love2, when I run this Love2D program, it runs, it pulls my window up in my, well, I guess my main display, the one that I have set as my main display anyway. So I have to drag this window over here. Well, <clears throat> that will never do, ladies and gentlemen. We can't have that. It's just not right. Well, luckily, Love has us covered. Let's go to Love in the um, wiki, and we'll go down here, and under General, there's a config files. And what we want are a couple of things. We want this guy right here, t.window.display, index of the monitor to show the window in. So let's do that, t.window.display. And I happen to know this is display number two. Now, when we run it, pow. There is our little guy rotating around in the window that we want him to be in. Okay, but I want him to show, I want this window to come and be shown right down here. Well, Love2D has you covered, my friends. Look at that, t.window.x or window.x and window.y, the x and y coordinate, the window's position in the specified display. So let's do that. This, this monitor is 1920 by 1080. So, let's say, I want it over here on the right, so let's say, oh, I don't know, 175, and let's put the t.window.y at, I'm just going to, well, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm not guessing, because I've done this. <laughs> uh, it's 650. So, when I run it now, there we go. He is where we want him to be. So, there's one more thing, or there's a couple more things before we do the next part, and that is, I want to animate this little guy, because he's really cool and everything for him to be spinning around, and, you know, we already scaled him a little bit, but he's scaled to about two in the X and two in the Y direction. Let's go ahead and bump that up, and uh, let's see if we can't make it like 10. How about that? That'll be cool. Let's see if, that, let's see if he'll fit. Yeah, he's gigantic. I love it. Let's stop the rotation so that we just have him sitting there like that. And let me bring up the sprite sheet that I'm that we're messing with right now. And if you noticed, uh, or if you look at the sprite sheet, this looks like a run animation. And it looks to me like there are, uh, well, not looks to me, I counted them. There are six frames that uh, that he's walking. He's, you know, six walking frames. So let's do that. Let's try to display all six of these frames in some form or fashion and make him animation and make him animate it. <clears throat> and so we know that this is one full row lower than where we started with this guy. And we know that the our sprite image is 16 wide by 16 tall. So it looks like we started here, X offset was 32, which would be put us right over here somewhere. And then 16 put us right here. So we want another 16 to put us down here. So that's where we need to start our sub image or our quad. So we'll go ahead and do that so that we can, uh, so we should see this one whenever we run uh, our program now. See? And it's actually this one. Oh, of course it is because we need to do that. Boom. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. I remember that. We had we actually were had this one that we were using. So now we're starting at the correct place. Okay. How do we figure out how fast to change these pictures to make this animation work? Well, we're going to need some animation parameters. I love parameters. And if I can spell it right, it's great. Param, goodness gracious. Come on. The first one, and one of the most important ones, is we're going to call FPS, or frames per second. And I'm sure you've heard of frames per second if you ever played any first-person shooters. It's just the number of frames that are displayed or flipped through every second. Um, and, of course, when you're talking about first-person shooters, you're talking about what's the update rate of the monitor. But we're kind of 
doing that, but we're doing like little sub pieces. So frames per second. So the number of the the num basically the number of frames that occur within a second. And let's let's just ballpark it and say let's start with 10 frames per second. So we'll need that. We'll also need to know what frame we are on. So we'll have a variable to hold that. And something else we'll need here is we'll just call it the anim timer, the animation timer. And we'll use that um, and we'll just go ahead and set it. And I'll tell you what we want is, so frames per second, that's not the correct units. We actually need to invert that and then we can get seconds per frame. So all you do is you just invert it. So it's one over 10 or one over frames per second. So and then we'll get the animation, the correct time for each frame for it to wait for each frame. So that'll be great. Trust me, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, and we'll need to, and we're only going to vary the x offset. So let's 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 uh, make a variable called x offset, and we'll start it. We'll just actually, this really doesn't matter because we're going to be setting it. It's just x offset. We're going to have an x offset, and we need to know the number. Also, need to know the number of frames. Num frames and we happen to know we just discussed a few moments ago that we have six frames in this animation okay so now let's go down here to love.update and we'll do we're gonna do this real kind of simply um, and that is we're just gonna go ahead and say animation timer equals animation timer and we want to subtract the delta time from it because that's that's the amount of time that has passed between each update right and if this is and I keep doing the parentheses, I don't need to. If animation timer is less than or equal to zero, then we want to do what we want to do. And that is we want to change picture. And we change picture, we want to say frame equals frame plus one, right? Something else we need to do is we need to reset the animation timer, right? And we want to set that once again to one over frames per second. One over frames per second is seconds per frame. And if you want to, if you want to do it in seconds per frame, you can. But this is just an easier, sort of a, an easier way to think about the animation, and that's just commonly what it's referred to as is frames per second. Okay, now we could run this, but we're not going to wrap around. It's just going to try to keep going this way, and I don't know. It may error error out actually. Um, so what? Actually, it won't do anything because we're not trying. We're not setting the rectangular region yet. But let's go ahead and take care of this now, and that is if frame is greater than the number of frames, then let's say frame equals one, and we'll go end. And again, there is uh, you can do something similar, I think, without this if statement using like a modulo operator. But we're just going to do it this way for now. It's kind of it's, it's easy to understand. We're we're good. Then we need to just set the x offset, right? x offset equals x offset. Uh, I'm sorry, not x offset. It's going to equal 16 because that's where we want to start initially, times the frame that we're on. By the bing, by the boom. You know what I'm talking about? We're done there. Okay, now we need to set. We need to set which quad. So let's go over here. Uh, where's my window? Where's my window? There's my window. So let's go back, and we want to go to the love dot graphics. We want to go find that quad again, and we're looking for set viewport. All right. And uh, as a side note, they put they're not, they're kind of cool in the uh, love wiki. They tell you nice things. It says quads bleed when scaled, rotated, or drawn at non-integer coordinates even within sprite batches. To compensate for this, use one pixel borders around the textures inside the texture atlas, preferably with the same colors as the actual border. That's good information, so we'll have to consider that if we ever run into anything or if we ever produce any type of art asset and uh, you know we get some of this, this uh, pixel bleed, basically is what it's called. So anyway, back to the task. We want this lovely little function right here. It's called set viewport and it sets the texture coordinates according to a viewport. Well, we know what that viewport is, okay? So let's say since hero sprite is our quad, we know that because we made it. And we'll say hero sprite colon because we want to imply that. We want to imply that implicit 
uh, this to be passed to it. Um, so hero sprite colon set viewport and x, which is going to be our x offset now. <clears throat> y, as we said, row two is 32 pixels down. Width is going to be the width of of our little uh, guy, which is 16, and height is going to be 16. And now if we run this, should, oh, boom, and I, because I spelled it wrong, set view wart, yes, set view wart, yes, of course. No, it's set viewport, and let's see if this works. Boom, baby, got it. Okay, there he is, and he is animating, and he's going through all of these pictures. Awesome, love it, and if we want to make him go faster, we can change this, rerun it, and see he's going faster. Or we can go 30. We can make him go really fast. That's too fast. I kind of like somewhere in between uh, 10 and 15. How about that? Boom. Love it. So we figured out how to control the placement of the window uh, whenever you run your Love application. And we're actually animating by taking quads within um, a sprite atlas and we're changing where that quad is copying its um, graphical information from, thus producing an animation. Nice. So, um, uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll stop right there. I think it's a great place to stop because we got a little guy that's running around now. It's awesome. And maybe next time we'll talk about uh, key presses and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll see. You know, I don't know where this tutorial is going to go, but it's, it's going to go. So, see you guys later.